It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Tonight, our guest, Genevieve Gorder. Genevieve is uh, the host of Town Hall, which is on uh, TLC, 10 o'clock, Saturday night. <laughs> They've been uh, pumping the bejesus out of this show. I mean... Oh, you've yeah. noticed? Yeah, I noticed you uh, hanging on a big paint can. I've seen advertisements <laughs> in uh, magazines. I've seen them uh, advertised on uh, not only TLC but uh, other other like-minded uh, networks. It's been uh, it's been a big push. At Genevieve, you know, from Trading Spaces. Oh, where do we start? Uh, <laughs> we I'm a big home there. improvement guy myself. Are you? Yeah, that's my thing. You know anything about building? Yes. You do. Yes, I do. You do. I. I got to warn you, Ty Pennington came in here and said he knew something about building. He knew something about bongs. Well, he didn't know anything about building. I know Ty Pennington uh, very well. He doesn't know anything about building. Um, I know about building. He doesn't. <laughs> Thank you. Let me explain something. Growing up doing this stuff. You do? Mm-hmm. You want to stump me? No. Try to stump. Try it, please. You Try to stump him. Just anything. Uh, with home improvement? Anything? Yeah, building, home improvement, mm. it doesn't matter. Mm. Let me see. Well, you can think about it for a Heating, minute. air conditioning. Uh, uh, give me a you second. Can, you can think about it. We'll talk uh, amongst ourselves. I don't want to put pressure on you. I don't no, want to get no you pressure felt. on the on the defense. You no, seem no. like you seem nice, unlike that uh, Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Ty, Ty Pennington. <laughs> was he on the defense while he was here? No, no. He, he was fine. He just doesn't know anything about building. <laughs> he's I, a carpenter. He's not a carpenter. He can build furniture. That's not a... He, okay. Look, I know I sound like a pain in <laughs> the ass, but Drew's the same way with the imposters that are on TV. The doctor imposters. Me too. Everybody's supposed to be something. They're not. That's why I started my own show. Ty Pennington looks good with his shirt off. He's there not a carpenter. He might be good at uh, whittling a chair or something, but he doesn't know what layout is for framing. He doesn't know about treated bottom plates and header stock. He doesn't know any of mm -hmm. that stuff. He doesn't. If you, you can't be a carpenter without knowing the codes. Yes. Well, yes. carpenters and builders are different professions. Well, well, look, carp, carp. First off, um, yeah, car, carpentry means you can build a house. You do finish. In my, well, in my estimation. Okay. Not, Carpenters for me is not, more like finishes. Not put uh, glitter <laughs> on 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 a hobby horse. Thank you. I was fed up with people who uh, aren't really what they serve. Imposters. The, 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 the design Imposters. People, Imposters. The, the people that pretend to be design. Yeah, because it gives design a, a bad name. And yes. that was very frustrating. It doesn't give me a lot of credibility being in the company of those, mm -hmm. those what, imposters. What, 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 is your, what is your, give us a little little background on yourself, Genevieve. How did you get involved with Trading Spaces, which I'm, I'm guessing was your big break? I guess it was. I, I was a designer since I was 19. Mm -hmm. I was working as one. I was working at MTV probably around the same time you guys were for a while. Right. Um, Probably making the same amount. Yeah, too. about oh, $2 no a day. No yeah. in turn, we had our own successful <laughs> show. <laughs> same oh, money. Oh, cheap bastards. We got a rain slicker out of it, though, I think. Uh, yeah, we did, actually, yeah. Yeah. They, they were great, though, around Christmas time. You get, like, one slipper. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, but you get worry. to go to the party. And that was the payoff. No, uh, no. That's what they said. Even that, you oh, get to go to the party? MTV, even we were that produced a, by somebody else. It was our producers who put the party on. Oh, even that was a tough perks. ticket, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they weren't that great. Oh, oh yeah. well, let's, let's, let's have a, a brief sidebar here for a second. We, of course, would get to go to the MTV Music Awards and stuff, mm. but the tickets were so crappy. Were you seat fillers? That people would go, <laughs> no, those guys, were good seats. They'd go, what are you guys doing up here? Is it, you doing some kind of a stunt where you run down to the stage uh, and deliver a right. People yeah. were like, what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good place to work when oh, you're yeah. 19, a little older yeah. than that, and it doesn't doesn't work. No. It's too cheap. No. But, but uh, so you started MTV. I started, I was actually, uh, I went, I grew up restoring old Victorians with my family in wow. Minneapolis, wow. where I'm from. So we would do them from the ground up. We didn't mm -hmm. build them, of course, because they were built a long time ago, but restorative wow. stuff was something I was doing when I was five. Wow. I love wow. your, your dad, I'm picturing him like Merlin Olson from Little House <laughs> on the Prairie. 
I bearded, wish he was. Bearded, husky, strong hands. Big he's a, hands. He, was big, a good, he was a good Norwegian man. Yeah. And, what did he uh, do? Was he? Was that what he did for a living? No, my dad was. My dad really was one of those guys who was thought they were too smart. Uh -oh. That they shouldn't ever hold a job for Let too long. You know that kind of guy? Yes, we, we talk about those guys all the time. Yeah. yeah. They can go to school. Well, they, 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 go are, to school. they, they are very smart. They're brilliant. They're smart. Yeah, they're they can yeah. ace a test and yes. never go to the class. Yes. Yeah. But they think they're too good for school because they well, can do that. They're entitled to There's things a, coming absolutely. to them automatically yeah. because they need to work because they're so smart. End that's up, my papa. End up sort of becoming a little bit uh, a little a little blowhard. A little blowhard. Yeah, that's my dad. Yeah, let me. Always way left of center, too. I got to say this. But hilarious. Way left of center. A lot yeah, of exactly. talk about how great Canada is. Yes. Here's the thing. I got to say this to I'm everybody. I'm marrying a Canadian, so with, watch out. No, I don't have any problem with Canada, <laughs> but uh, it's not the world's greatest country. The way your dad would think it was. Yeah. They have right. health care for everybody. My dad could have been a socialist easily. Yeah. yeah. Here, here's the whole thing with all you uh, so-called uh, pseudo-intellectuals over there. Think uh, you're too <laughs> cool for school and too smart for the room. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, all you, you can't figure out how to make money. And if you could... That would make you smart, but you can't. You can't be there a genius go. and can't figure out a way to make a living. You can't be both. Because here's the thing. Just hold on a second. What if we just forget about this planet? Let's just say we're on another planet. The Sneetches, Drew. Let's <laughs> yes. say we're out with the Sneetches. And the Sneetches <coughs> have this stuff called uh, uh, Globo. And Globo isn't good for anything, but it can get you everything. Right. It can get you cars, it can get you transportation, get you vacation, get you yes. security, roofs over your head, bowling alleys in your house, it gets you education for you, gets you everything, it's Globo. Gets yes. you everything. Yes. Now you're a genius of Speechville, no but you can't figure out how to get a chunk of Globo. Mm. Still well, a no, genius? Now that you're not willing to work to get the chunk of Globo. No, no, because well, Globo you, you just is no good. You're Globo, a genius. Globo belongs to everybody else, but I not would, me. I'm too genius. I would I'm argue that the <laughs> ultimate genius is the guy figures out a way to collect the most glava. <laughs> yep, I but he's a genius of many sorts. Like, All right. I mean, like Prince. Yeah, your dad's a great guy. Prince, great musician, genius. Mm -hmm. But Could he's... He cook me a good meal? Probably not. No, but he's figuring out how to collect the glava. <laughs> But aren't geniuses really underdeveloped in every other category except for the ones that they're genius at, usually? Uh, they're usually, they socially that, have different. Yeah, and now you're talking about autism or, or, or <laughs> Asperger's or something, which is true. That does happen that way, but it doesn't have to happen. All right, way. let's keep going. Let's get off the rails. <laughs> let's go take some calls. Just, take some no, calls. I want to take on. some calls. I want to break it down. I want to find out what's going on with Jennifer. All right, all right, all right. So I'll wrap it up really quick. MTV. Now, how did you get on to TLC? And, okay. and my God, this home improvement stuff is going through right. the roof now, Drew. Where was everyone 10 years ago when, when you, I was screaming about When you about declare this? that it was the thing to, the future. We're Thank waking you. up. We're Thank waking you. up. America, America's waking up to design, which is good. Actually, I was in MTV as a... I worked there all through college. I went to the School of Visual Arts in New York City. Mm -hmm. studied design. Mm -hmm. And then I left for Europe for a while. Came back to New York. Was mm -hmm. working at another studio. Did you study called, design in Europe? Yes. Mm -hmm. I worked mm -hmm. in Barcelona and mm -hmm. Amsterdam mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then came back, and uh, I, I designed the Tanqueray 10 bottle. It's gin. Oh, I don't really? drink it, but I designed it that year. This is something graphic designers would know, but anybody else could care less. Yeah, well, I like my Tanqueray gin. Well, that's the year that Trading Spaces was looking for designers, and it uh -huh. won an award. So they wanted designers from every facet of design. So uh -huh. they chose me, and I was like, no way. You know, no way. Interior design is for really wealthy people. It's for ladies on Park Avenue who mm -hmm. have nothing to do. And it's designing women, you know, sitting around drinking mint juleps and uh, talking about nothing important. I agree. Let's take some calls. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks no. for your interest. No, I see. No, yeah. But, but you said no. It's for the masses. Well. It's for the peoples. Well, that's what changing rooms and trading spaces is. Right. And thus the design extravaganza on television today. Uh, Town hall. All right, now have you have you can you stump me by the way? Have you thought of any any you got any stumpers? Do you know what a chase is? Yeah, I do know what a what a chase is. What? Uh, chase is where you would run. Well, I would call a chase in what it was inside of a soffit, essentially. Like if you're running wires, speaker wires, or something like that. That was a weird little stumper. I had to had to yeah. think about you. it for a minute. <laughs> you would build a soffit. Let's say if you had around to run the chase. Around, around a chase. Chase is like something that runs wires? Chase is like a, an pipe? empty area that you could you run, go. that you I could see. pull wires or pull venting space. or something like I that. See. All right. All right. Oh. Chase. What else you got? Oh, Ask about how to hang a door or how to create heating she floors in or that something. Stuff. I guess I do. Uh, oh, you haven't watched Town Hall, obviously. Yeah, how to hang a door. <laughs> well, they cook that stuff. Come on. You That's think, not interesting You want to talk stuff. door hanging? That's another show. What do you Boring got? bit. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? 
What size hinges? To... What size hinges uh, exterior? Uh, what size? I don't know. Huh? You got me. You don't know the exterior hinges? <laughs> no. On a door versus interior? No. You know what NRP hinges are? No. You know why you use NRP hinges? Why? NRP is non-removable pins. If you have doors, you have French doors that swing out, and the pin knuckles on the outside, they'll knock the hinge pins out and take the house. door off. So why are you sitting in a radio studio? I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> but don't you tell me you know stuff. about doors. How dare you? Uh, I know about finishing doors. All right. All right. Listen, at least... I'm a designer, Yeah, puppy, you're a not designer. A you're not Ty Pennington who comes in here claiming to be a carpenter. I know a lot uh, about building, but I'm not a builder. All right. All right. True. I know nothing about any of that stuff. That's right. You're, you're, you're like, you're like Sh Sergeant Schultz. Well, at least we're all honest in this room. No, listen, I don't mean to get on you. You're you're a designer. <laughs> That's what I am. Yeah. That's right. No, he mean, and you're vivacious. You, you want to you take me on design, go for it. All right. I don't know how you describe that, though. How do you describe that? How do you take it on? Yeah. How would you ask a well, design question? Well, how do you question? challenge? It's the same thing as building. If you want to challenge show me you. on anything, finishes or texture or lighting. But how, or do you, how, do you, how do you verbalize it? Do you know what I mean? Design. I can't tell you what the if question you, is. But if you, 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 you were going to ask somebody, if you were going to competition, if you were going to stump somebody, what would you ask them? If I were to say something about design, uh, I could do design history, which is always something really good. That's what good. I figured. Um, yeah, but th that's... It's, I mean, it's just about as interesting as hanging a door. No, but, no, no. Um, <laughs> Or I could, you know, but ask about... But knowing more about design history doesn't make you a better designer. No, if, the more you know, the better you are at anything. No. Yes. No, look, all the idiots I work with know more about sports than any guy in professional sports. Doesn't make them a better ball player. Thank you. Well... <laughs> well, yeah. It makes, it's not a better ball player. I'm not a better chef because I know more about design, but I am better at design if I know more about it. If I know more about the world, I'm better at whatever I do. I, know, I actually agree with her on that. No, it, it <laughs> helps, but tell that to everyone no, in I know my for office sports, who knows everything for, about for, every for something sporting event. A non, for, for a skill that is not exclusively a brain skill, it doesn't apply. All right, I'm, all I'm yeah, saying to Genevieve is how do you have a design competition yeah, verbally? I'm curious. What, what, how would you stop somebody on a design I, I guess, question? You know, like I, how, do you do, how, do you how do you do this? How do you put on like a what? Venetian plaster finish? You know, how do you with do this? With a trowel, with how a smooth you, metal trowel. I mean, it's really an interesting conversation, right. but if you want to challenge me on all anything, right. you can go for it. All right. <laughs> I got only think, personally, I'm fascinated. I got to think design, though. But I told you how to put on the Venetian plaster, didn't I? No, you didn't. You put on with a metal trowel. Well, that's how you apply it, yeah. Yeah, and then you rub it down with the metal trowel. <laughs> you apply it with the metal trowel, and then if you want to add dye, you have to mix that in before you do that, and then you put it on the trowel, smooth it out, wax it, polish that, get the right finish, blah, blah, blah. All right, I'll give it a trial she's, finish she's the color. Myself. She's the color person, don't forget. She has All to right. color to everything. All right, Andrea. Yes. 22? Yes. What's up? Oh, uh, well, I've... I've never had a relationship longer than three weeks <laughs> since I, I think I was in eighth grade. Is my last like long relationship? But twenty-two. Anything you want to tell us about oh. your uh, upbringing that might have led to that problem? Um, you're well, fat. True. No, please. I didn't say that. Please. By the way, I, yes. People think, really believe I say those things. I know. That's why it's funny. <laughs> well, Amanda? Yeah, I mean Andrea. Andrea. No, I wasn't. I wasn't molested. But were you I mean, neglected, I, abandoned? I was it a father? Okay. I mean, I did until mm -hmm. I was seven, and then he let my mom. Know right. So that's an abandonment. Abandonment is the thing that you then act out in this relationship. He, which, he left at seven. Sorry for cutting you off. I think worse than not having a dad. I, I really yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're attached to him, and then he vanishes, and so now you have this unfinished business. And uh, certainly, your brain now is attracted to people that are like your dad because that's who you love and wish were back in your life. And guess what? Somebody that's like your dad is somebody who's abandoning. Somebody who's, somebody who's going to leave you. And if you're with somebody who's real, who's actually available for a relationship, but by the way, what you find was not like your dad, you couldn't tolerate that. So you'd sabotage mm -hmm. that and you'd take mm -hmm. out, take, take mm -hmm. off. When, when your dad took off, he never came back? Well, no, he just, he just left. And you never saw him again? I, I seen him at my, at a, at a funeral, like maybe a couple years later. He sounds like oh, okay. just a yeah, delightful that's... gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. What do you remember about your dad? What were some of the qualities, the good things? Um... I don't. I. I mean, not. I mean, I don't really remember that much stuff. Just watching. I don't know. Just hanging out with him, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't really remember. I was seven, so I, I don't yeah. really remember. Oh, you, you're. Uh, you can remember stuff when you're seven, right? You, you do, especially. You do well, remember. Well, Go ahead. Just. I guess. Just. 
you know, fun stuff, I guess, watching TV and hanging out with him. But. True. What are you getting at? Well, what I'm getting at is, A, she's avoiding the feelings associated with what Genevieve's question is, which is a perfect question. And secondly... That was a good question, Genevieve. Yeah. I know we got off the back start, Cheers. but that was a strong question. <laughs> and that what she remembers is being with him. What she misses is being with him. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're going to make sure that you don't get in your relationship is being with somebody. All right. You so, don't um, get anybody, you get three weeks, and that's it. Andrea. But how can I get over that, though? How, how well, yeah, therapy, you, you therapy, therapy, can. therapy. Get a little therapy. Yeah. And then start chipping away. I mean, have a four-week relationship, have a five-week relationship. And, and, and get a little better. Don't go for guys that remind you of dad or that you're super yeah. attracted to. Your attractions are going to be distorted. Yes. You don't trust your attractions. Andrea, my dad left when I was 13, and I had the same problem for quite a while. Mm. And and you look for all of those good things that you remember about your dad, whether he was really funny or he was really smart or if he drank a lot, whatever. Some of these qualities tend to show up in the boyfriends that you keep afterwards. We get to drink a lot. Uh, and I, then they leave. I've had yeah. a lot of those. Yeah. Uh, but you have to go for, you, unfortunately, you have to stop looking for the bad guy and start looking for the good guy. Did, uh, did dad come back? Or did you just go off to Canada to blow hard? My dad? Molsonville. Yeah. Dad didn't come back. Oh, really? Uh -uh. Now you're a big TV star, though, and he wants back in your life, right? He's called. Sent oh, really? Let's, 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 wow. Let's, let's, let's bash him. Wow. <laughs> he deserves a little bashing here. Yeah, yeah. well, here, here's the thing. I, you know, look, far be it uh, from us, and I bash my own family. That's, and I'm, 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 frankly, I'm so tired after bashing my own family every night. <laughs> I really don't have mine. energy for others. But <laughs> I really do want to tell people it's okay to say that that people did things that are wrong and hold them accountable for it. You know, people do a lot Especially of apologizing, like, well, it was a difficult time, or you don't know how you would have reacted. No, he that, he that was wrong. And I'm not saying, and Drew and I have discussed this many times, I believe it makes you a bad person if you do bad things. Mm -hmm. People are like, he's not a bad guy, but he killed his wife. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and call that a bad guy. That's me. Yeah. And if you do bad things, you're a bad guy until sort of proven otherwise. You can sort of redeem yourself. Uh, you could go to you know Nicaragua and feed the free, feed the hungry for twenty years and maybe get out of the bad guy category. But as far as you go, he's a bad guy. What he but, did but here's was the wrong. Deal. Now it's possible that he was in his disease of alcoholism and mm -hmm. is he in recovery now? I don't think so because I think one of the first steps is let's, really contacting. Let's bash him. Yeah, let's go after him. But he, that's what he, I'm thinking. He's with not that. responsible for his disease, but he is responsible for his recovery. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's that. That's yeah. heavy, Drew. All right. Well, but Andrea, there's hope. There, there is. is. There is. You it could, takes time, but you well, got to look for the good guys. Well, why don't we ask Andrea if her dad was an alcoholic too? Because that there's she there, doesn't know. Yes, yeah, she does. She's going to defend him. Andrea. Yes. Was your dad an alcoholic? Yeah. yeah. I told you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, so there, there are programs. Got a sixth sense about these you, things. You, if you want to change internally what goes on with you, there's a free program called Al-Anon. You can go there, get a sponsor, work the steps, and you will magically be attracted to a different kind of person. All right. Right. Laura. Yeah. That's Hi. true. You're 21. Yes. What's up? Um, I am 21, and my boyfriend lives in Phoenix. E -e. What's up? What, you mean? Mm, it's I, that's I affectation. That's something's affect. going. Nah, I think she's just trying to be quiet. Yeah. Is there somebody else in the house? Yeah, I can. I can go with her. Hang on. No, you don't have to go anywhere. Just go ahead. Drew. Drew was getting that breathy Marilyn Monroe thing. Yeah. I was Worse. getting. I was getting like like uh, stepdad like song logs disease. in the other room. What dad? Pulmonary disease. What dad? I told you, dad was around. I'm talking to somebody. I gotta go downstairs. Dad, I... No, it's not. He can't even imagine who it is. Oh. Yeah, let him put, you want to put him on the phone with us? <laughs> no. You can put your dad on the phone. Dad thinks it's like us. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad, it's it's Love Line. They can't play a song for you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Thought someone was in trouble for a moment there. <laughs> All right. That sounds like a delightful gentleman. Another delightful dad. This is a delightful dad night. Well, I want to know who he thought she was talking to. Yeah, yeah. That I think that's what about. we're going to hear about right now. Yeah. Yeah, he thought I was talking to my boyfriend. All right. Now, let's hear apartment. about it. Your dad sounds like a fan of your boyfriend. <laughs> no, he just, he caught me was talking to my other boyfriend um, years ago at like two in the morning and he was harassing him, so. Hey, Laura. Yeah? One quick question. Okay. 21, right? You're 21? Yeah. What the hell are you doing at home? Um, actually, I'm I'm living away from Is this home Chris? Right now, but come um, the middle of May, I'm going to be moving back home. Wait, 
Oh, no, I couldn't even track that. I, I don't care. What's your question? <laughs> oh, Engineer Chris? Engineer Chris. Oh, at 21, he was still in his mom's womb. <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> well, he was moving. crawled back in. What are you talking about? He it's crawled still back in. in. Yeah, he stayed there. He's just emerging recently. No, he wasn't even born at 21 years. He was born at like 23 and a half. All right, go ahead, Laura. Yeah, sorry. I'm home painting a room and a an, an bookshelf and whatnot with my dad. That's all right. That explains you everything. You can do it. What color are you painting it? <laughs> um, the room is actually like a lilac, and the um, bookshelf that's built into the wall is like a berry color. Whose room is this? Why are you painting a room in a house you're not going to live in? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be coming back home in May, but um, this is my old bedroom. It's getting turned into a guest room. Okay, got yeah. it. So what's going on? Um, I am actually, um, my boyfriend is 20. I'm going to actually be 22 in, like, just under a month. Like, I think it's one day under a month. And, um, I was thinking of... Yeah, who cares? Keep going, would you? <laughs> like, none of us. Strange detail there. Boy, I wish, uh, <laughs> Drew, I was 22, uh, 18 years and four days ago. Don't pay attention awesome. to them. I'm listening. Jesus Christ. Keep going. I'm, I'm, you must be good looking. With my boyfriend, but he's you, in, well, technically he's in Prescott, Arizona. You, wait, 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 wait. They're living together. No. But he's in Arizona and you're in Pennsylvania? Yes. How does that work? Um, very difficultly and um, a lot of money on planes. <laughs> okay, so you're not cohabitating, you're just visiting each other across the country. Yes, but okay. I'm considering cohabitating with him come August. Considering. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And how's the relationship going? It's, it's going great. We're, we're at eight months, and we were friends for a year before, you know, we got interested in each other romantically. How much mm -hmm. time do you have you actually spent together? How many days face-to-face -face have you spent in the last eight months? Um, easily, easily over, over a month, probably near two months. Because every time I go down to visit him, I visit for a week. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's working. What does he do for a living? Um, right now he is... Right now? Right, right now. now. Bad oh, sign. that's trouble. He's 22, you guys. Yeah, right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be 22. He's 20. Oh, no, she's one day in a month. Okay, right, right, right. right. Yeah. He's going yeah. to school to be a pilot right now. Okay. Well, that, didn't, that doesn't qualify for the right now No, comment. it doesn't. It doesn't qualify for the right what? What do you mean? What kind of pilot? Commercial pilot? Um, yeah. In no, Pennsylvania? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait no, a minute. He's, he's in, in Arizona. Arizona. Okay. His parents are paying for him to fly a Cessna. Um, actually, he's passed a Cessna, thankfully. <laughs> but but somebody's paying for him as a hobby to go fly planes. No, not a hobby. He's going to school for that. He's going to flight right. school. Okay. All right, All right. cool. Yeah, but that, going, that doesn't, you, you wouldn't say right now to that. You go, he's going to be a pilot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Be more definitive about that. All right, Laura. All right, we, we, we give you our blessing just because we hate your dad and we like to see you out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you scared of? What? What are you scared of moving in together? Um... Well, my mom is very supportive of it. My dad doesn't like it at all, even though my brother is Shocking. cohabitating with his now fiance in Ohio. Um, my dad. Laura, you have the idea. strangest way of expressing yourself. <laughs> yeah. I honestly, you're so interesting. You, 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 all the all the usual sort of nuances of language have been sort of tossed aside by Laura. Yeah. You know, right now. He's gonna become a fighter pilot. It's like, what, what, and my, my, we're cohabitating. He's living with his girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Why, why are they cohabitating? I, I, what, what, are you, are you living know. Amish? Like, are you like an Amish Don, or something? Wait a minute. Are no. your parents Amish or something? Or, or shakers? Um, I'm an hour north of Pittsburgh, so no, I'm not Amish. All right. Well, listen, go Steelers. I mean, you should go too. <laughs> Get out of there and go see your boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's not going to last. But you guys hang out for six months and she you come back so and your dad says, You're right. Yeah. You know, yeah. cadence. Very interesting. Very unusual. Yeah. Genevieve has it. They're, they're sort of, you guys were like separated at birth. You both have an interesting case. Oh, I think. You. <laughs> you know, but no, but no, she, not your language Minnesota. is normal. Yeah. <laughs> That's what there's, my problem is. There's an interesting. But you don't have the Minnesota. I can't even do that. No, you I don't can go there. That. Oh, I oh, bet you can. Yeah. yeah Minnesota. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota. yeah, it yeah. seems like you've, you've worked to overcome that. No, I've just been gone a long time. That's just what happens. Yeah, that's that's not an accent you're going to stay with if you move out. <laughs> no, I, that, I, one, that would magically well, go away. It, it comes it, back it, when you go it's, home. It's one that it's one that people seem to be able to drop as opposed to the, the southern, southern bra, or, or they, the, even New Jersey. Even New Jersey, they can't. Yeah. New York, they can't drop that one. Yeah. The M Minnesotan people I know, and I know mm -hmm. quite a few of them. They just seem to drop it magically, and they you know pick why? it right up magically. Yeah, because it's not a it's not a lyrical issue. It's not a pitch. Or magical people. There's no pitch issue. It's it's a it's a it's a <laughs> pronunciation of vowels. It's mm -hmm. our O's. Yeah, it's purely the yeah. about. Yeah, right. It's the, almost like slang. It's you can just drop yeah. it. All right, let's take no, a. Uh, it's it's close. No. Close. They say a boot. We say a boat. 
Okay. <laughs> wow. I'll buy that. She's right. She's right. I can I'm almost very tell Canadian, the, you guys. I know. I can almost tell the difference between those two pronunciations. <clears throat> Genevieve Gorder here tonight. She is uh, from TLC's oh. Town Hall. All right, hold on a sec. Drew, come on. I beg your pardon. Stop cramping yes, on yes. me. I'm doing something here. <laughs> Saturday nights, 10 o'clock, TLCs. Yes, go ahead. Joe. All right, we do last night of iPod Shuffle again and 20 free songs from iTunes. The bumper you will hear is Float On by Modest Mouse uh, sometime in the next hour and a half mm -hmm. or an uh, hour and 35 minutes and 10 seconds, per if I'm Laura. And when you hear the song, uh, dial 1-800-LOVE-191 to be the first person to say iPod Shuffle, and you win the songs and an iPod Shuffle. All right, fair enough. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. Love line, madam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. That's not the song, is it? Is that the no. song? No. Modest Mouse? That's not the song. They wouldn't shoot that off at the beginning of the show. Why not? What do we care? Just give away most <laughs> goddamn things. Let's get, it, let's get it over with. Well, here's the other thing is that they'll start bombarding Brian with a billion calls for the next half, 45 minutes. So. I swear to you, uh, Genevieve Gorder's here tonight from Town Hall, Saturday nights, 10 o'clock, TLC. Also, of course, Trading Spaces. Uh, and and are, what's going on with Trading Spaces? Mm. Are, have you moved on and they're just showing reruns? Well, a, a couple of us have moved on to other things. I still do specials once in a great while. You can't mm -hmm. always chop off the hand that, you know, got yeah. started. So are, I, are they are they talking to you now, like uh, network people, because of the success of, like, uh, Extreme Home Makeover and that kind of stuff? I mean, there's got to be shows wanting to, call, wanting to rip, rip it off and do it on a network. I mean, yeah. you know, Big Three Network. Absolutely. I mean, well, you saw... What happened with tra after Strange Spaces, too? There's like 50 new design shows, and some of them oh, are so yeah. similar. It's just ridiculous how yeah. that medium in particular kind of repeats itself, isn't that creative? But um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure I'll, the show that I'm on now will get ripped off at some point. That's, I guess you have to consider it flattery. Yeah. But I think we, a lot of us, a couple of us left Trading Spaces and went to different ch channels, and Doug and I stayed because, um, because we found a good home. And oh, it's good. just working. So yeah. it's well, very listen, easy. there's uh, definitely um, take it from uh, guys that have been around a couple different networks. Uh, it's <laughs> nice. You make friends. They treat you right. They if trust you, you. They leave you alone. It's like any relationship. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't care if it's a if it's your maid or you're the gardener or it's your gardener or you're the pool man mm -hmm. or it's your pool man. Whatever it is, after a few years, you you, you trust people. You know them. They do a good job, and yep. you get to do your thing. You don't have people looking at you and bothering you and second guessing you all the time. Well, the biggest thing is that you just have enough room for your creativity. And right. People let you do it. You got to earn that trust. Exactly. And yeah. so after five years of trading spaces, the trust was there, and thus you know. I wrote this show, so I, that was it. I was just uh, laughing, thinking, you know, this iPod shuffle thing where, where, you know, why don't you just give it away? Radio stations do that thing where it's like, 106.7 <laughs> K-Rock, caller 107 <laughs> is going to get themselves tickets to you 2 And then the poor f board op, the phone op is like, one, call two. one, call two, call three. <laughs> I sit there watching. I always thought they were kidding. I just thought, oh, you wait 10 minutes and you pick the guy up. We got a wiener. <laughs> but no, there's you never got 107 callers. No, they do. There yes, is. they do. That, they, you, can go, you can watch them do it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how stupid radio guys are. Like, yeah, who would know if they didn't have one? Nobody would know, but the FCC <laughs> would cl close the place down because someone would sue because they were caller 86, right. but in reality, they were 106 and they mm -hmm. want their Check Schwinn the mountain bike. <laughs> Meanwhile, the poor, the poor Spaz. It's answering the phone, the van driver. It's answering, it's like, uh, 57. No, call it 58. Call it 59. Call it 60. Call it 61. Intern call it 61. $2. Yeah, how about just the first caller that gets in gets the Schwinn bike? Got to do, do 106.7 no callers? That. That's just as big of a challenge to be the first caller. I, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe a bigger challenge to be the first one than the 106.7th caller. But the poor operator doesn't have to. 87, 88, call 89. Thanks for That's why they bust Some of that, up every once in a while. the guys on the air screwing with the callers. That's you think so? Think, yeah. the call. yeah. They're screwing yeah. with the phone. Phone screen on Ryan in here is having flashbacks. He used to do it, apparently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So well, so why, not, well, why not make it 2,500 then? Chris used to do that. Yeah, Perez, that's where he started off. Oh, Chris. I'm surprised Who's he's not still Chris? doing it. The legendary <laughs> living at home, Chris. He's the uh, engineer that uh, usually uh, fills Michelle's the seat. huge Birkenstocks uh. left behind by uh, engineer uh, Michelle. Huh? Yeah, that's him. <laughs> oh, my God. You tell him to answer the phone a hundred times. That's that's two days. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Two days. That's being, yeah, that, being kind. Yeah. The winner will be announced Monday. That's good. It's Thursday. 
All right, let's go. Come on. There you go. Break it down. Let's go. Let's get it on. Whatever. Yeah, we gotta get it on. She claps. You like that? She goes claps like this. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Jade. Hello. You're 17. Yes. What's up? Hi. Um, I had a question for Dr. Drew. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you have triplets, and yes. I'm a triplet. I have two brothers. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> when we were little, um, I don't know how common this is, but we developed our own little language. Yeah, it's very common. And, particularly, um, particularly under you know three, in that range, or two to three. Mm. But this, we still use it. How does what does it sound like? To this, uh, to say something else. in yeah, say something in triplet. Say the N word. <laughs> the F word. Say the F word. Just oh yeah, be less offensive. Cuss words. Oh okay. well, how would we know? You're it's in triplet language, right? <laughs> say I want to go get a glass of water in your language. Oh God, I don't. Know. We would be, we would just say like a nickel bob or resake or just it, crazy. People say it sounds like rushing or something. And, and, what, and what were they, that were referring to certain objects or is yeah. that a, an or activity? Like mom and dad, like just crazy things. I don't even remember making them up. What, what is your mom? My mom is Madi. And dad? Badi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All it, right. It, it sounds like a retarded kid saying mom yeah. and dad. <laughs> Listen, it's more obnoxious than those Trekkies <laughs> with their god-awful languages. And they always end up sounding like the same thing. And then when you break them down, it turns out they have eight words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, That's enough. And it is common, and sometimes it does sort of You're fine. Does stay through time. <laughs> sometimes the reason it stays is because it's sort of reinforced by adults. So, ooh, you guys have a language, and mm. tell us what you're doing. And, uh, yeah. But it can be quite elaborate sometimes, and, and, it can, and it can precede English. It could be the language that you actually use to communicate before you get a formal language. Yeah, my brother's girlfriend actually came up to me, and she kind of was freaked out because he used it, I guess, during an intimate moment with her. Oh, no, that's a problem. Yeah. What did he say? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Mom, <laughs> he got freaked out. What did he say? Mama Bumba Juba. He was telling her she loved her or something, and it was during. And well, what did he say? How do you say that? I, I don't know what she said. He said just gibberish. But it's your language. You should be able to say, yeah. I love you. Snalinar? Snalinar. No. Wow. Would, oh, <laughs> it's like Dutch. No, this is uh, <laughs> this is uh, Dr. Seuss language. You, you know, it's funny too. They always, whenever they do that thing where they interview insane people and they're like, they're they're were abducted or they're part of an alien, whatever, and then they end up asking them what what the language sounds like. It always sounds like the same nonsensical, yeah. crappy, stupid no, no. gibberish. Yeah, yeah. It, it's always ridiculous, but it's always the same, and it, we're always excited because it's like. Oh, you, you're you're from a different planet, yeah. And then they put them on your trance, and the, and they're like, speak in that language. You know, like knee beep, schmeek, <laughs> ming, ming. Like, yeah. But that she doesn't shouldn't sound be grossed like a out, language. right? That he used that no. language because that's probably the most it's, dearest yeah, and loving thing. language he has. That's right. Yeah, but there you go. She should be freaked out that the girlfriends sought fit to tell her. Yeah, Guess what, your boy? You know, yeah, yeah. When your brother was on yeah. top of me the other, actually, wasn't on top of me. He was doing me wheelbarrow. Uh, <laughs> You know, technically, but figuratively on top. He said, snow, look, He said, snow, look, look. And, and then he yelled, duck. Uh, <laughs> That's snow, sexy. Look, look snow, look, no. I'm that brain. Body, body. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of gross. It yeah, kind of yeah. dirties the language Suck a little schnizel. bit. <laughs> Suck that schnizel good. Yeah, yeah, it's hot. That is so hot. <laughs> yeah, you like Stupid a little snicker sneasel. Dr. Seuss on top of you. Ridiculous. All right, you don't tell every. Look, er, let me just say this, everyone. Don't feel compelled to tell everyone you're embarrassing, weird, like, hey, uh, you want to talk about uncomfortable? <laughs> Last night when I was being intimate. Uh, speaking of uncomfortable, <laughs> this is uncomfortable. <laughs> Right, you? Yes. Your uncomfortable moment from last night, now uncomfortable for me. <laughs> Multiplied. My brother you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, pick, picked up a, put a couple zeros behind your mm -hmm. uh, uncomfortable moment of last night, uh, and that's what's now. going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uncomfortable means shut up. Don't, don't go telling everyone. You're getting weird on them. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. I know you agree with me on of this Of course one. I do. Well done. <laughs> Bravo. Huzzah. 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 Tyler, so much straighter than hooray. Yeah, hooray's How like, gay uh, is hooray? Yeah, yeah. Where'd that come from? Anyway, hooray. I, it, I don't know. We had huzzah. 
I mean, the, you know, the, 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 the Limey's the had his, uh, No, the founding fathers Well, they brought it over. Yeah, they brought it with them. They packed their huzzah up in a steamer trunk, and they brought it over. We got <laughs> Somebody's got to call us and tell us when huzzah became hooray. Come hooray on, is so gay. Hip, hip. Huzzah! Oh, they say hooray find out what that in is. England. They say hip hip hooray in England. A they lot. do. Oh yeah. Yeah, but the huzzah but came the over. But the huzzah. Yeah. Huzzah. I, and, I think and, huzzah you know, was more military. You feel? It, maybe it was like a class thing. I think. I think the rich for people kids. Said huzzah. Oh, interesting. Maybe, or maybe, maybe the peasant said hooray. Or maybe as we got all these ethnicities <laughs> in, it just got switched. You're right. So. I, I, Everything else. I, I think the. Uh, I think kids are more comfortable with the hooray. Sure. But as you become an adult, especially male, that hip hip hooray. Well, who says hip hip hooray? You? Yeah. When? Hooray. Hooray. Well, I do well that. <laughs> I do that. Who says that? Because I do, because it'll be someone's birthday or something, and I'll go, you know, three cheers for Stan, hip hip, and everyone has to join in. You live like <laughs> in a, the British colony or something. It's funny, <laughs> yeah. You could be at a funeral. He lives just, in 1780, did you know that? You could be <laughs> visiting us old the colonist. You could be standing over uh, just an open casket and, and go, uh, Three cheers for that guy. And everyone look at you weird. And then you go, hip, hip. And everyone yell, hooray. <laughs> like, you have to answer, hooray. He was hooray. a good man. Hip, hip. Yeah. Let's it's start like, a movement. It's like Just not... start saying huzzah. Oh, oh yeah. He started it. It like starts started. right here, right now. It's huzzah. Like, <laughs> huzzah. It's huzzah like, to that. It's like a knock-knock joke. You know, you got to go, who's there? You just have to go, who's right, there? Right, You could be clinging to life with a with a car pinned under a car. So you'd have to go, knock, knock. who's there? The paramedics said knock, knock. Right. You'd have to, <laughs> yeah, you'd have to finish. You'd have to. You'd have to finish shaving a haircut. SUV rolled over on you. It's got you pinned. You're clinging to life. You'd have to finish, Drew. Oh, my. You have to. I, I know. All right. What can you do? I huzzah. just say, huzzah we replace that. Hooray with huzzah. What's your sign, Drew? Virgo. Yeah. Virgo? What yeah. What are you? Gemini. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that explains everything. So yeah. Huzzah. Mix. Huzzah. <laughs> Huzzah for you guys. <laughs> yeah. What are you, Virgo? Leo. 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 Yeah. Is he a little organized, Dr. Drew? Yeah. Drew's organized, yeah. That's and you're him. kind of two-faced? Uh, yeah, no, actually, <laughs> I, I don't have any Four of that. Face. No, I mean, look, you, you can read enough of that. You're uh, already a contractor, but you're sitting in the radio studio. I got it. That's yeah, all yeah. I need to know. <laughs> two yeah. men living in one body. I, I don't really have two personalities, so. He barely has one. I barely mm. have one. I got half personality. <laughs> Let's uh, take ourselves a little break. Genevieve Gorder here tonight. She is from Town Hall on TLC Saturday night. Ten o'clock. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, of course, uh, and, some uh, reruns of Trading Spaces. Huzzah. <laughs> Huzzah. We'll take a break. We'll be right back after this. What? what was in the kitchen? Yeah. <laughs> Huzzah. Huzzah. It's Huzzah, we're back. I'm Adam. That's uh, Dr. Drew. Genevieve Gorder's here tonight. She is uh, from uh, Town Hall on TLC. Ten o'clock, Saturday night. Yeah. So, what, uh... Are you out here? Where do you live? I live in New York City. Oh, you're, you're out here just doing press and I'm that kind of thing? I'm just out here, yeah. I'm just hanging out and seeing some friends and going, doing a lot of work stuff, too. But it's mm -hmm. nice to be in some warm weather for a little bit. It's mm. freezing in New York. Yeah, that's, what they, uh, yeah. that's what they say. Yeah, it's winter. Yeah. Fathom that, that, L.A. people. Yeah, this is winter here, too. This is it. <laughs> this is about as much winter as, uh, as we get. I mean, even though we've had... Uh, some rain. 16 oh. feet of rain in the last... Uh, Hour and a half. We still got to conserve. <laughs> yeah. we gotta, we're in a drought area. This now is a desert. It was penalty. Penalty desert. for water use. Desert. Oh, speaking of uh, the uh, water Nazis around here, yeah. just speaking to uh, Genevieve, who shares our. I'm uh, a water Nazi. No, no, no. <laughs> I was. I was. Uh, I'm going to get to that. But we both uh, share a passion for uh, home improvement yes, and all do. that stuff. Uh, I had this great toilet in my house that was I had this all green bathroom they used to do bathrooms in these great colors where they would do the tub as you should yeah the tub was sort of this mint green the yeah. sink was a mint green mm -hmm. and the toilet was mint green yeah. as well as the green and black tiles and you everything you can't find that anymore you can't no, find toilets it's, it's, like that it's awesome find... stuff this toilet was about, about two stories high with the big green tank and the green bowl and everything mm -hmm. and and you know when I when I bought the house I walked right in the bathroom and said wow look at this this is awesome I love this toilet uh, most people tear it up too <clears throat> when I when I took possession of the house the toilet was gone no they took the toilet ripped out no the DWP when the house changes hands, no. you have to go. The tank's the, too big. Have to go the low, low volume. Oh you know, the one point six gallon, or whatever. they inside the toilet to, to Of course. Uh, one would think they could have thrown a goddamn brick in there, but yeah. the problem is, is if, if they put a brick in, then I would take the brick out, and so they couldn't oh. have that. Oh, what the point a shame. is, is they undid the toilet oh. and threw it in the closet. Oh. 
Now, obviously, it could have been <laughs> chipped or wrecked or whatever. But but the second thing is, is the way the toilet was hooked up in the old 20s style, the water feed was up at the top. Yeah. Yeah. The way they are at the bottom, they're, the way they are in the new toilets mm -hmm. are down at the bottom. So I had this big channel of open tile where, uh, you know, and this and sort of... you can't of, find tile to match it to cover. No, and this sort of jerry-rigged hose that ran across <laughs> and one under the uh, Sears toilet for uh, 68 bucks. I hope you put bucks. your old toilet back. Of course I put it back, you <laughs> Nazi police, you <laughs> retards, coming into my expensive house, yanking out my toilet, leaving weird exposed pipes hanging out of the wall, and then, are you... The what tragedy. the F is the going tragedy. on in this country? <laughs> You can come into someone's house and swap the toilet out? Never heard of it. Oh, that's L.A. It's a yeah, California it's, thing. It's an L.A. That's why I thing. live in New York. It's, it, but it's all right. You can build um, on your garage as well. Yeah, yeah, want. right. Yeah, you sure. can uh, change the. No, you can't do anything in L.A. You can build a house out of just cardboard. A, just a bunch of <laughs> sell it for three hundred thousand. Pussies. Just, yeah, I know. This this town. Is why just, are you living here? I, it's it's a good goddamn question. <laughs> I'm, I'm this close to packing up my huzzas and uh, getting out of Dodge. <laughs> No huzzahs for you today. Coming into my house, <laughs> taking my toilet apart, moving it into a closet, putting on crappy toilet. You know, I paid, I'm sure I paid for the crappy toilet, which I got rid of. And the stupid... Don't we have bigger questions than this, Dr. Drew? Oh. They're waiting. Oh. They're, waiting. <laughs> They're, waiting. They're waiting through Are the toilet done? talk. No, I'm not done. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about this later. All right. All right. All right. Moving on. All right. Tyler? Wow, he responded yeah. to you. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm How'd you do that? Come on. You got to <laughs> oh. think of more building stump questions. Yeah. Anymore, what? My phone's yeah. starting phone to beep in my ear because it's dying. I've been sitting on hold so long. Uh oh, careful out, Tyler. Go ahead. Go well, ahead. Call your mom. Like, every time my boyfriend and I have sex, afterwards, I get locked jaw, like in the left side of my jaw, and it lasts for about a half an hour. You get locked jaw, meaning your jaw locks open? No, like, like closed, and when I open it, it pops really. So you get you get spasm of the of the the muscles controlling your jaw. Not really. It's like it locks, and I can't open it. And if I try to open it, I have to force it, and it just kind of pops. And all right, is this oral sex or intercourse? Both. Well, obviously, it's the oral sex that's giving you the trouble, unless you're. Well, I mean, I don't even do it if that you often, can be, you can be tense, you. gritting your teeth. Something yeah, like that. Yeah. I mean, really usually when you, the, 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 the problem that happens with the uh, jaws and oral sex is they dislocate. Yeah. And the jaw dislocates and slides forward and it gets locked open. Then it's time for oh, really? a new boyfriend. And so, no, and so yeah. people get, it's the two big things. You don't like that. I did and that so, to a lady once, but not, 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 didn't get wide. It went past each other. Yeah. The this teeth, way. Yes, the yes, teeth right, went past right, each other right, and right. dislocated. Oh, looking for the penis. <laughs> That's they, right. they, they passed actually each other. got. <laughs> The upper, the uppers got actually lower than the yeah, lowers, exactly. and they passed each other. And, yes. and it, yeah, yeah. My penis is able to bend like a pipe cleaner. Sure, sure. Well, <laughs> yeah. awesome. But, yeah, it's a, <laughs> same size as like a pipe cleaner, too. Straight. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, like an engine crank. You know, yeah. Shape. Could it be? Yeah. It could be like a weird condition. Well, that, I think it's kind of weird though, because we don't have oral sex all the time, and I don't even. But do, is your often. mouth open? Are your mouth open and you're kissing? Not really. Did mm -hmm. you get locked jaw as a kid? No. Well, the, you, you have, uh, this yeah, is all like, part of the temporal mandibular joint. Probably has nothing to do with the sex. I think she's crying her teeth at night. Right. Or something. It's all part of the temporal mandibular joint syndrome. You need to see a dentist about this. They may give you a bite plate. It, you may well get to the thing where it locks open too, and that's not fun. You have to go to the hospital and have the. I could get relocated. a shot. I could yeah, get her. It's locked open. It just like it. All right, we got that, Tyler. But you, you got to see a dentist about the TMJ syndrome you got. Mm. It, it's the it's spasm of temporalis muscle. The muscle that goes all along in here. Comes down to right. here and there's spasms. Overuse. Chelsea. Hi. I 22? To, yes. What's up? To, hi, guys. How are you doing tonight? Hi, <laughs> Chelsea. Um, Good. Hello, Genevieve. I love your show. Everything. You're totally awesome. I'm actually going to school for interior design. Look and, at you. Um, I just wanted to know, and it's kind of a cliche question, but your inspirations. I know sometimes you get ideas from artwork and things like mm -hmm. that, but, I mean, how do you, how do you come up with such... Like an idea, a concept. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, this is what we were all talking about a little bit earlier, and I think it's true in design that uh, the more you see and the more you do, the more you experience outside of what you know, the better designer you'll be always. So I always say, especially to young people who are wanting to be designers, that the best way you can do this is to travel and get out of your world and go and experience every sense you possibly can, every taste and smell and color, and bring that back. Otherwise, you're just going to keep making these beige oatmeal houses. That's why I got right. that TiVo, by the way, so I could really go experience <laughs> other cultures, other worlds.
world. <laughs> she's, not, she's not talking about porn, Adam. No. Not just porn. Hey, about, you can be just, inspired anyway. by porn, too. Yeah, not yeah. just. That's what I said. Not just Absolutely. porn. Absolutely. Huzzah. 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 Huzzah, baby. Huzzah. But you just have to take Mother Nature's the best designer. Okay. So take flowers. You take vegetables, you take That's fruits, right. you cut those open, there's your color palette, and there's your start. But your concept has to come from something you've done in your life or something someone you're designing for has experienced. You know, so blow, tap in and li- be a good listener. The blowhard okay. uh, I hate is good there, luck. there are no straight lines in nature. Yeah, yeah okay, thanks. Yes, yes, there are. And there probably are. I'm sure they're plenty <laughs> straight. Bamboo seems pretty straight to me, I've by seen the way. straight rock. Uh, yeah, I've seen I've seen a lot of straight lines in nature, but I like that. It's a weird sort of re- retardoism that uh, when people fall back on aphorisms, it means they, it means they don't know they, what they're they talking they about. Talking about. No. Exactly. All right, but can all right, we're gonna, we're what gonna is that called an aphorism? Aphorism. We're, we're going to take a yeah, we're going to take a break. It's blowhardism too. Blow we're we're going to take a little break. Uh, when we come back, though, remind me to ask uh, Genevieve whether she thinks that people can be good at design who aren't good at design you can improve the question you yes. can improve but it, uh let's talk I'm about thinking, this you know as it pertains to music or acting or whatever it's can you question. really be good at something you really just aren't good at <laughs> yep. all it. right and then who decides what's good yep. yep you got it all right we'll take a quick break be right back after this yeah mm. who gave me happy yeah it's delicious i can't talk Kind of Nothing more up. fun than listening to people eat on the radio. Mm. <laughs> just mm. Especially Adam can't breathe with his nose. Just... Are you one of those guys? Oh, yeah, I hate to sit next to you. Mm. <laughs> oh, 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 oh you, don't, you don't know. <laughs> well, first, off. Let me say Who this. knows? We're not sleeping. <laughs> out of that. When I'm done, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> That's number one. If I do get too drunk and I have to crash out, do it on the sofa. You must have the doggiest <laughs> breath in the morning. <laughs> Big mouth breather. Well, whatever. You know, I get the cotton now. Yeah. Well, your I'm throat not... must be dry, too, huh? Mm. You get the lockjaw? Yeah. <laughs> Just when you have oral sex with the buddies. <laughs> I do, yeah. No, I get, I'll tell you what you get. What you get is uh, you get a nice uh, mouth full of sawdust. You know, really get the cotton mouth, although it's been raining so much over the last few months in uh, Los Angeles, and it's so humid that you just don't really, if you never... It's not as bad. Mm-mm. No, I mean, go to, uh, go to Vegas, go to a hotel room in July, and it's just, you wake oh. up, your, your, your eyelids are like spot welded right. uh, closed. Do you, like, ever, you, do you have a humidifier? No, oh, you mean like in my house? Yeah. No, I haven't got that going. Fill the bathtub with water and leave the door open. That's a good idea. I do that in every hotel room. Oh, you do? Mm, because it's really bad. Mm. Yeah. Traveling. I heard um, somebody, uh, I think Dickie from the Boston's, I don't know why, I think it's him, told me that uh, before you go to bed, especially, you know, we used to go to Vegas a lot, do crank anchors. You go to Vegas, and like I said, during the summer, it's just, it's so dry. Yeah. He said, uh, take a glass of water, a couple of glasses of water, just dump it on the carpet right by the edge of the bed. Wow. Mm-hmm. It just evaporates all Same night. Thing, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It works. Closer than the tub, but uh, sure not as much volume. People love that. Oh, no, I wouldn't do it there. Yeah. You pee there. I pee, I yeah, pee there, I yeah. Pee. I pee on the carpet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know, I understand. Okay. Why yeah. waste the water? Just go ahead and pee. No. Well, I'm drinking the water while that's I'm urinating. That's what I'm saying. Okay. All right. Uh, Drew, I don't... Uh, huzzah. Oh, huzzah. huzzah. That's all I got to say. Oh, 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 yeah. Be- before uh, before we left off, I was uh, asking Genevieve about mm. um, style or taste or design. And uh, if you think people can... If you if someone can get it who doesn't obviously get it, you know, is, are you born with it? Like it, yeah. you think, like you are, like a musical. Doesn't people mm-hmm. have a musical ear or a green thumb or mm-hmm. something like that? That's true. I, I as I was a teacher, design professor for a couple of years as well, and the, I think the Where? hardest at the School of Visual Arts mm-hmm. in Manhattan. And I think one of the hardest things, and I actually said it to a couple students because I know it would be harder to hear after they were out of school. But mm-hmm. sometimes you're not meant. To Ooh, be how'd they take that? What you go to school for? How'd they take that? Um, terribly, and you know, of course, they're not going to be happy about it. But I hope that they come back ten years later and say, you know, thank you, because you would have wasted a lot of years of your life, and you would have had yeah. a lot of rejection. Keep waiting. Well, That's design not is. Happen. I mean, design we'll is something. TV show, so that's yeah. Cool. Design is something. I think that's pretty intuitive. There is no, like, you can't ask me a question or stump me because there is no right or wrong answer, per se. It isn't a literal science. But right. I think you're born with you're an lucky. eye or you're not. Yes. And you see, you're, you see the world through design 
or you don't. I, I agree, but there's a lot of people that think they were born with the eye and don't realize they're, they don't have the eye. And there's a lot of people where it's an attractive life to them. Oh, an oh, interior designer. It seems, glam- it seems, seems very glamorous. Seems yeah. like a, it's, it seems cool, especially to a lot of women it, and, and a lot of gay guys. I bet, though. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, there's nothing, you see... There's, it's, it's sort of like actors in the mm-hmm. sense that someone can be banging their head up against a wall for 20 years in this mm-hmm. town, and there's nobody who could tell them they can't do it. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, this is sort of one of those things, too. But also you see people that just have done horrible jobs in their own well, I homes. Bet there are, right, I bet there are people like your mom that go, well, that's your idea of good design. Well, mine is something else. Yeah. Right? Exactly. If it well, makes yeah. them happy in their own home, let it go. But yeah. if they're trying to be a decorator or a designer that's and right. do it to other people, then you got to say something. But there's a big difference between decorator and designer. Mm-hmm. And decorator mm-hmm. is more of a hobby. Design, mm-hmm. you're trained. And there are definitely rules that you know this color will work with that color. It's just a given. Mm-hmm. And decorators may know this. Designers try and break new ideas through and design mm-hmm. bigger structures and bigger concepts than just the aesthetics, just the mm-hmm. superficial. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? No. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. I'm lost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, Brainers, you know what I'm talking about. No, it's, it, it, any, everyone, your mom's goofball friends considers yourself a, a decorator. Put but, up a wallpaper uh, border and they think they've done Yeah, design. The room. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, there's various levels. Yeah. All right, you, now, do you, do you enjoy the design and aircraft and automobiles yes. and bridges yes. and, and everything? Yes, everything. Everything I see. All right. Favorite car. You got a favorite car? Carmen Ghia. Oh, really? Mm, that's nice. The mm-hmm. Volkswagen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. But if you, I were you, a car, that's what I would be. But but you'd like the form, not necessarily the functional aspects of that. Well, form and function make, married together, beautifully make a good design. Yeah. Just a great form and terrible function is still bad design. It has to work. Yeah. Has My car that. sort of works. What do you have? Oh, I got things, baby. <laughs> Yeah. He's I got, got he's things. Got, he's I got, got time. You can tell me. Uh, I got things. <laughs> I saw Come your over. pacer out there. Hey, no, Come no, over. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come by tomorrow. <laughs> hey, you, you can help me. Okay. We're yeah. Going. Yeah, I got ideas. Got some, got some plans? I got You're plans. You're a contractor. I'm a designer. We could do big things. I know. We could get together. First off, we could have a super hybrid child. But you're a mouth breather, number, so it's not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but with your genes and his... That's right. Your good, lo- your yeah. good looks and my genius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of sad. Alex? I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah, hello? Big bearded guy. He's moving to Canada. Alec? Yeah. Hey, you're 19? Uh, yeah. What's uh, up? I have a question for Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. Um, well, like my general area... area. <laughs> Um, what is it? Um, I'm not like circumcised or anything, but there's like this kind of like pasty yellow thing growing and I've tried to wash it with an antibacterial soap and I've done anything. Should I worry or go to the doctor or something like it, that? It's growing or it keeps accumulating? Yeah, it just keeps accumulating. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's nothing to worry about under the foreskin. You got to just keep things cleaner and drier. Yeah. It's just hit, discharge. Hit that it's thing with it. Magma. With the, yeah. So Hit that, that thing with a hair dryer when you, yeah. when you get out you of the shower. You got to pull the skin back, get things bone dry. It can be yeast, it can be debris, and it's sort of a common thing under there. Is there yeah. like an ointment I could use or something? Uh, I, I think if you just keep it super clean and super dry, th- this is this is the the care and handling of a foreskin. Yeah, uh, is what prevents that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got you got to. You're at 19 now. It's time to do the proper care and handling. Yeah, but if it persists and it's uncomfortable, then you should definitely go see. So Jennifer spent some time. A urologist. Side, sidebar. Jennifer spent yeah, time like, in Europe. My out. mother's an obstetrician gynecologist, yeah. so yeah, sure <laughs> I know a lot funny. of these things. That's a lot about force. <laughs> but seriously, don't be scared to go to the doctor and have no, it checked no. out. The more you know, the better you feel. That's no, right. No. There are no straight lines in nature except None. for bamboo. Start with and fruit and, and cut it open. Stuff. <laughs> All right. It's one to grow on. So it's nothing uh, to worry over, over, right? No. Uh, just, now, now you're becoming a bogus caller, Alex. Yes. No, no, seriously, I'm not. Oh, well, then just maintain. Well, how about doing what uh, Dr. Drew told you to do? Hygiene. Okay, cool. Clean, peel back, bone dry with a hair dryer. If it's green, okay. you got a problem, though. Bone dry. Bone dry. All right, let's uh, talk to, uh, tries to have sex with girlfriend. Internet. It's been on hold for a long time. Problem. What, smegma thing? Yeah. It's, well, it's, not, skin, it's not the discharge thing. That, well, uh, someone didn't teach him how to clean it. Right. Yeah. Care and handling when of the foreskin. When he was a baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, uh, you ever get rid of that foreskin? It's ridiculous. Excellent conversation to have Yeah, but then folks. it decreases sensitivity. <laughs> yeah. So you don't ejaculate so quickly, which is what Ooh. guys always complain about. <laughs> Girls True. complain about, too. There's uh, no real opinions except for foreskin <laughs> <laughs> removal. That's. Uh, I think that's how I'll remember him, actually. It's not gross, though. 
Yeah, no, no none of these conversations are gross. <laughs> okay, no, <good>. four skins. <laughs> All right. I want to talk to, uh, I just want to get rid of uh, some poor people who have been on hold for 94 minutes, such as Max. 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 16 year old Max. He vaporized. All right. You hear it. Huzzah. Huzzah. Let's see. Good night. All right. On hold for uh, 48. 48. Tori? Yeah? What's up? Hey, um, I had a question. Mm hmm. Um, I can't have like a boyfriend because when I find out that a guy likes me, I absolutely despise him. But when mm -hmm. he starts to not like me and thinks I'm like a jerk or whatever, I start to like him. And I mm -hmm. can't help it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's what you do when you're 17. Yeah, you're maybe some of that may be just a developmental thing. Are you okay? Have you had a tough life? Um, I've had emotional issues with my dad, I guess, but that's mm -hmm. about it. What happened? Well, when I was little, he used to, like, emotionally abuse me, and I have an eating disorder because of him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, because sound, I, didn't, uh, I didn't eat enough, and he made me eat more and more, and yeah. Is this Genevieve's shaking her head feverishly. Yes, yes, mm. yes. Self-confidence well, issues, sounds like. Well... Uh, okay, you don't before, think you're good enough for he, someone to like you. He, you, right. you could be describing just a concerned parent who wants you to eat your veggies. But it wasn't just like, it was like, I, they're a lot bigger than I am. I'm really small, and I didn't eat fast enough for them. And if I didn't, I'd have to eat in, like, the bathroom while they had, like, their TV night or whatever, and I couldn't come out until I was done. Mm, I'm still not totally convinced. Are your parents still together? No, they're divorced. I live. Mm -hmm. I used to live with my dad and my stepmom. Mm. What's your dad do for a living? He really didn't get like a real good job because he'd have to pay child support and he didn't want to, so he kind of got paid under the table for most jobs. Hey, like, by the way, all all this stuff about dad, and yet she's living with dad. Where is yeah. mom? Yeah. Eating disorder is usually a mom thing. So mm -hmm. what the hell I, here? Well, I lived with him for like two years, and it got really bad. And I finally called her and told her, and she got. Like heart, like she got sole custody of me. Why? But listen, most little girls don't move away with dad when the parents get divorced. Mm -hmm. They stay with mom. What's up with mom? She alcoholic, drug addict. What's up with her? It's just I didn't get along with her. Like we saw things very differently, and she thought it'd be best to live with my dad for a while. But it didn't no. Work out. no, 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 no. Well, no. okay. No. And but and sorry for uh, sound like an a hole, Tori. But so far, it sounds like you're the one who's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Of the group. You didn't get along with your mom. You didn't get along with your dad. Your dad wanted you to eat faster. Yeah, you're, you're, first of all, you're in denial about what's ever going on with your mom. Because the mo moms don't go, uh, why don't you just go hang out with dad? You're a little bit tough to deal with. How old were you? When, I when, was in fourth grade. No way. No, no something's wrong with your mom. You yeah, all right, hold on. we got to bash on mom for yeah, a second. Yes, something's I, very wrong with mom. Uh -uh. But most moms would, would, you know, you'd have to pry them. From the hands of their of their mother, and and to go live with an abusive a, a hole dad, send their daughter to yeah. their father's an a hole yeah. dad. That everyone yeah. knew was an a hole. Yeah, and it is sort of like, well, I was Democrat, she was a Republican. Yeah, I didn't get didn't see eye to eye. We so didn't I, see eye to eye. Yeah, uh, so I moved out. And and dad, I, I was before. eight. I was eight, and we didn't see eye to eye. What are you right. talking about? Make it ten, but no. the, the point is, is out of there. Yeah, something's up with mom, obviously. Oh, usually, and either mom was into drugs or booze or something or mom is just not a very good Emotion person stable. well there's two yeah. there's two options for mom intrusive awful narcissist that uh, drove you away and then didn't care when you left or a drug addict who didn't feel anything. Oh, I thought you were going to say secret agent or world secret traveler. agent <laughs> agent 99 yes you could be a, a okay. world traveler yes. Tori yeah hey, what was tell us the truth about your mom I don't really know she had me when she was really young so she wasn't very she wasn't ready to be a mother. She just came into it, mm -hmm. so she didn't really know how she to raise me that well. Well, this is where your profound, more profound emotional problems yeah. are coming from. The dad is, is, a, is a pain in the neck. I understand that, but you would have managed that if you'd had an adequate attachment to mom. Yeah. So, so who, are you, who are you living with right now? I live with my grandmother. Whoa. Whoa. What's mom? What's up with mom now? My, my mom, um, I wanted to go to a certain high school, so I live with my grandmother, and my mom was like 15 minutes away. And that's your mother's mother? Yes. By the way, again, again, a mom worth a GD would have used mom's, grandma's address and have you living with mom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah something's very, yeah, very you, wrong. You, is you sure your mom's not into drugs or something that preoccupies her? She doesn't go out. She is totally against it. She doesn't do is anything. She on a, like is she on a bunch of psychotropic, a bunch of psychiatric meds? No. 
What it seems like, I mean, it's obvious why she, she doesn't why guys that like her she doesn't like because it doesn't seem like either of her parents are very involved or like her right so it, it would it would it would a do two things yeah it would expose her to a real relationship which would be heavy and two it would stand out in bold relief against the kind of caretaking she actually got right. wow. which was painful and awful Huzzah. Huzzah. all right tori yeah uh you should not be a fan of your dad's uh but here's the thing uh your mom deserves an equal amount of your maybe, hatred maybe as a, well. A disproportionate I, I would say more. Yeah. I don't know why some people have to pick a side, you know, like, oh, I have a... Uh, Declare a major in the parent department. I, I have a metric ton of crap to give somebody. I'm going to give it to my mom, to mom or mm -hmm. dad. No, break it in half. Give them a thousand pounds. Give them a thousand you pounds. You hear Adam. He gives it to both his parents Hell all yes. the time. And his grandmother gets a fair share. And your sister mm -hmm. and stepmom. It wouldn't be fair to the one I wasn't abusing. But don't focus on all this, uh, all the people you hate. Move on and evolve from this. If your grandma's cool, chill with Grams and move on. Let your parents do their thing. They're not helping you out. Yeah, and here's though, uh, I, it, this impossible. Good words, but yes, it, if, but if physically you, impossible. If, if you have an illness, meaning a life-threatening illness, i.e., bulimia or anorexia, make sure that's being adequately treated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, Tori, and and just uh, here's the thing: you're 17. Start making friends. Rely I on your have, female I have friends. friends. Good. Good. Start Good. planning your way to college. Stop talking trash about them behind their back. I and, don't. I can't. And, I couldn't do that. I like them too much. Good. Good. Are your friends Count kind of troublemakers? Huh? Are your friends troublemakers? No, not at all. My cool. friends. All right. Good. Good. Stay with your friends. Mm -hmm. Don't get pregnant. Remember, all all guys aren't your dad. But don't look for guys to do things for you, to make right. you feel a certain way. Right. You feel good about yourself through accomplishments. School, yep. after school stuff, friendships, college, all that stuff. Not because guys want to F you. Huzzah. 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 Good Huzzah. luck. Yeah. But when did, when did uh, two weeks ago, maybe three, uh, our callers decided that no, not at all is the response to every question. Right. No, not at all. Not just no or, mm -hmm. yeah, but no, not at all. I think they've been oh, seeing... Oh, do you find patterns all the time? People just copy each other yeah. throughout the night? There, there, there's a weird societal... There's a weird societal sort of denial thing where... Uh, it started with the uh, athlete uh, in the post-game interview. Right. Uh, Donovan, you throw uh, 11 interceptions in the first half. Do you think that, uh, you think that hurt the team's chances of winning? No, not at all. And, and, then, and then he says, uh, and then he repeats and then he, the then question. Go back. I yeah. got to say, though, the interceptions probably hurt us. <laughs> right. That's what our call was first answer. Is just every athlete and every interview, you can't tell them anything. Yeah, but it's no, not at all. That's not even, no, no absolutely not, 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 no, not, not, not at all. And doesn't no, everyone not say at all. literally all the oh, time, even well, when it doesn't mean he literally? literally? He literally, he literally <laughs> jumped out of his skin. Literally. <laughs> literally. I literally, he literally, I literally, 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 literally jumped out of his Literally. I literally jumped out of my skin. Literally. Yeah, that's another thing. I jumped out right of my now. skin. Literally. Adam literally. Is literally a millionaire. Literally. Oh, that drives I, me crazy. I well, that's true. I am literally a millionaire. But I literally <laughs> jumped out of my skin literally. and my bones literally turned to powder. And, and you're still I, alive. And were sucked up I, or smoked in a hookah pipe by an Indian. Literally. I, I turned, literally. I turned to blood Literally. 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 <laughs> Anyone I, says that, they get hang up, hang up on tonight. I was so startled, I jumped so high, I hit my head on an airplane wing. <laughs> literally. Literally. Literally hit my head on an airplane wing. Literally. Literally did it. It's no grammar anymore uh, in these schools. Yeah. I know. People have uh, effed out literally. They really have. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything anymore. Uh, literally, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We have to get this. Literally... Literally crapped a buffalo. <laughs> literally. Literally. Okay. Talk to Phoebe. Come on. Oh, huzzah? Someone Ready? knows about... Uh... <laughs> hey there. Phoebe? All right, here we go. All right. Um, I was just looking in the dictionary, and huzzah came about in, like, 1573. So that's uh -huh. the earliest. And then that turned into hurrah around 1716. And then they don't have a date on hooray. It just... I don't know. What we just say? bastardized it in America. Oh, hur hurrah <laughs> turned into hooray. Right. I believe. Did did you um let me let me say it, it was hip hip huzzah there we go and we screwed that into hip hip hooray hurrah I did mean, we hurrah. say hip hip huzzah or was it just no. huzzah our our founding fathers the founding fathers they, 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 they had hip hip huzzah they most of them have huzzahs yeah. so the huzzah huzzah, huzzah huzzah the general huzzah huzzah turned into hurrah which turned into hooray 
Yes. Exactly. Does it and say why or how? Doctor, do something. Wait, about wait hold that. on, Phoebe. Phoebe. Sorry, Phoebe. Sorry. Does it say how or how or why? No, they don't have any information under hooray. And then where? But, but I mean, they have a date. They know the day, the year of transition. <laughs> Is was it at a World's Fair or something? What happened? Okay, it says perhaps from German hurrah. H u r r a is where hurrah with the h came from. I was just gonna ask. So and in the thing is just pretty. Hold on, I have to look it back up. Well, we but just it pretty much words. don't say anything. Well, other no, than think about it. In, in the mid mm -hmm. mid nineteen mid eighteenth century is when New York was getting settled by Germans. There you go. And mm -hmm. maybe and mm -hmm. Dutch, and maybe that's where it all that's kind of code. bled in. Wow, riveting. Phoebe, literally, 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 I was literally, I literally, riveting. I love these I little lessons. Literally, Thank oh, you. I hate that. Phoebe, you had a question. Oh, I just want to wonder if things with OCD could be mistaken for anxiety disorders. Oh, well, very commonly. Okay, so very it's common. possible there's just OCD and then just and vice versa, and, okay. and it's hard. To, it, and bipolar gets it gets mistaken as anxiety disorders too sometimes, and depression gets you know these are hard things to sort out sometimes. Depression, bipolar. Bipolar manic, agitation, anxiety, OCD. There's a lot of overlap in those syndromes. Mm. Like you were saying, pretty much as long as it doesn't inhibit your daily routine. The, o the OCD? Yeah. Well, if you're having enough symptoms to be thinking about it, uh, you might want to look into well, it. Well, it's just bit. kind of things from childhood, like weird little things, like coming up with little games, like walking to school and I have to step on the leaves on the ground. I can't step on the cement. Yeah. Just weird yeah. little crap like that. Yeah. that that's OCD. That word, that's o th those are OCD qualities. And mm -hmm. OCD in our culture is something highly reinforced, right? You're, you're obsessed yeah. about yeah, school. You're, you're, I have, have I, in high school, I had BFD. I didn't, I didn't care about anything. Didn't want to study. You still have BFD, as a matter of fact. Oh, so <laughs> What's that, Phoebe? What? Oh, I just, they o overreact to everything nowadays, so it's like you don't really know what to worry about, like ADD, you know? Oh, my yeah. kid doesn't yeah. give you well, for everything. No, that's right. <laughs> and, and I think the point being is that w when it starts to impair your functioning or your quality of life, that sort of thing, that's when you kind of look into it. What's the difference between OCD and anxiety? What the symptoms? What's the difference? How do you know? Well, you can get anxiety over an inability to sort of uh, act out your obsessive needs. So you get anxious because and you're not, is you're OCD not. something that's like physiologically in your brain, or is it more of a nurture thing? Well, it's nurture all your brain, thing. right? It's all it's all wiring issues in your brain. Okay. The question is how much of well, it is set up. Not everything. I mean, some things your parents abuse you. Correct. So the question then is how much is it merely genetics that you would have had this no matter what your environment had been growing up, and how much is environment? Mm -hmm. And it's always either way a, you should blame your parents. It's that's always an interplay. It's always Nature an nurture. Interplay. Interplay. You pick Huzzah. your poison. Huzzah. All right, Huzzah. Phoebe. You have a, You have a child. You have a young yeah, child. I do. But I was right. married for more than a year before I had her. Okay. If you know, there you go. <laughs> now you're divorced? Huh? You, you're still married? Yeah, I'm married happily. Oh, very okay. happily. Oh, wow. good. Take it easy on that guy. Oh, Try to screw up the kid. All okay. Right. Thanks. All right. All right. All right. All right, wow, we rarely get the hang-up. We yeah. actually got the hang-up. Right. She beat me. Well, phones don't hang up anymore. Like, I'm imagining an old yeah, You push phone. a button. Yeah. She was yeah. an old rotary. Yeah. It really, it, 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 you know, it... You used to be able to take some aggression out on a tough phone call. Oh, remember that? You just get... Because get it would ring. It would, like, you'd hear a bell when you'd you get, you get it the, down. you get the thing, and, you, and then you'd get the, hello? What do you mean? No! Wait a minute! I want a second jet. Hello? Hello? And then you just get bang There's the phone out. tangled in the cord. Yeah, you get tangled <laughs> in the it. cord. You could <laughs> slam it down when you're angry. Pay phones beat the crap out of right. a pay phone. You start right. punching yeah. it and whacking it with the things. Now everything's got a chip in it. Mm -hmm. It's not, nothing good. Mm. Nothing, you know, it's gratifying. There's nothing, nothing, nothing satisfying about well, it. You all. can heave it, but then what are you done? You, you can, can chuck still get it, those but old you, phones, you, you, you can. Know. You can, yeah, I know, but it, no one has them. You can't slam down a portable phone. It, right. it doesn't work. Right. It doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it, Drew and I have talked about this in the past. We're from an era where you could punch appliances and get them to work. Mm -hmm. TV wasn't working, <laughs> so really, whacking the side of it. That was the standard. And made that great big tinny deep, like like a, you're banging the chest of the Tin Man. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was Fonzie back yeah. then. Just start banging on stuff. You know, toaster ovens and space heaters and stuff mm -hmm. like stuff wouldn't work. Like, just, pow. Like, pow. Yeah. Mm. I, I that was my dad's computers. job. That's the job of the dad. Hit stuff. Yeah, just, just, just <laughs> punch stuff. appliances. Now, you can't punch a DVD player no. or plasma screen TV. Or a, you know some uh, some some oven that cooks with uh, a, you know uh, solar convection, panels yeah. and convection swirl yeah. reduction system. Uh, that's uh, you can't punch anything anymore. So what are you punching? You got to punch your old lady. I, I know it's not I, popular. I, 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 I can't. Hurrah, say that. Hurrah. Hurrah. I, I, I know it's not a popular thing to say, but I'm trying to be honest. Yeah. I get mad at the TV. I call my old lady over. Yeah. <laughs> I punch her. Lovely. She punches the TV. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. All right, we'll take ourselves a uh, little break. I think we need one. Yeah, we'll be right back after this. Oh, 
Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one er. Genevieve Gorder here tonight from Town Hall, which is on TLC, ten o'clock Saturday nights. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. And uh, so, trading spaces mm -hmm. is that through, or is there more? It's still going. It keeps going. And for going for and you. Going. For me, it's a it's a very once in a while thing. Right. Once in a while, they're like family to me. I mean, you know, I'm on the same network, so it's not really a big a big hassle. It's so easy now that I'm designing towns. and restoring entire towns. Yeah, <laughs> I guess there's a lot. Doing of... a living room is like I could do it in my sleep. Yeah, yeah. Drew, you ever do a town? Oh sure. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I can tell Drew's been up yeah. to it. Yeah, I'm designed. So. Drew's got no no artistic flair at all. Drew's a left brainer. He knows I, I, what he I likes. It. Yeah, I appreciate he does, it. He's, he does You're know. An enthusiast. Mm. Just nah. can't create it. No, no, I am. No, he. Uh, but, enthusiast. And, yeah, think, nah, think about me with cars and. No, no, and yeah, art no, and but I, I, you know, an enthusiast would 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 go get something. You appreciate they become, enthusiastically. They'd be a collector. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I appreciate it. But, you would dig it, Adam. It's all restorative, kind of revitalizing these old historical. I'm communities. into that. You would just. You would dig it. It's really, yeah. really, really fun. Yeah. The stuff you find under all these towns that have covered themselves up in the 60s with vinyl siding. Yeah. It's oh, like yeah. little jewels, like like your house. Yeah. You know? See, we get angry when we see that stuff. Oh, it, that's why I did the show. Mm. It was making me mad and the imposters. Yeah, the imposters, <laughs> like Ty Pennington. He's not an imposter. Yes, he is an <laughs> imposter, everybody. <laughs> not a carpenter. He's not, not. He can, not the carpenter. He can build good stuff, though. Uh, I have to say. You have to see it. You didn't see it. You had him here right, in a radio right. studio. You saw him. He could fire up a table saw and make something. Yeah, he, he can. I worked with him for several years. I'm not. Mm. Oops. Oh. I swore. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Anderson, that was. Uh, <laughs> FCC. Really? Seen him make stuff out of that? Make cabinets? You think he'd do like kitchen cabinets? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Huh? He can. I'm not. I, honestly, mm. I would tell you if it wasn't true. Could he do drawers? Yes. Mm -hmm. Seen him make drawers? I've seen him make drawers. He's made and drawers for me. You think he knows the difference between a, a dado and a rabbit? See, I can't answer that question. All right. I'm going to defend her friend. All right. Chris. All right. Uh, where are we going? No more Chris? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Yeah, I'm here. 26? Yeah. Uh, Came on to the show, didn't know door height, though. <laughs> didn't know 6'8". Didn't know door height. 8 foot. 8 -oh. Eight is eighty inches, but it's six eight. Okay. Eight foot's the ceiling. There Let's you see. Go. Listen, you're a designer. I'm a designer. You, you I'm can, not a builder. No kidding. But <laughs> Ty Pennington. He's carpenter. not a builder either. Yeah. And I say huzzah to him being not a builder. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> you got a beef with Ty Pennington. Well, it's just a monster. <laughs> Everyone thinks <laughs> nice. he's a, a carpenter. He can really build stuff. Seriously. Uh, he built. He's that's chick stuff. He can't build a house. He builds a house. But he doesn't build a house. In the in the TV show, he builds <laughs> a house. All those other people build the house. I know. Uh, there we go, Chris. Uh, Twenty-six. Sour uh, grapes. I want, I want to try and stump you, Adam. Go ahead. All right. What's the What's the collar tie in a house? Collar tie. Let's see. I'm gonna figure out what a collar I have no tie idea. is. All right. <sighs> Sounds like what you did to your first house to sort of shore up the walls. Yeah. Drew, no, uh, no help from the it peanut sounds like I think, Is it something you used to put siding on? No. No. Collar a collar tie is uh, is uh, used in framing. Yeah. They have uh, they have you know like joist hangers, tico clips, and. Uh, Collar tie would be uh, like a hurricane strap no. that held. Uh, you're close. You're right. You're you're, you're uh, right by the joist. It, um, all right. Uh, who makes them? Simpson? No, no, no. You're 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 kind of. You're talking about a hurricane strap for your uh, shear wall. No. Yeah. What a what a collar tie is is when you have your ridge beam and then you have your 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 uh, roof rafters. If you want a volume ceiling on the inside. You have it. You have to have some type. Instead of having a, a lower ceiling joist that sits on top of your top plates, it's higher up, and it kind of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I part. got, uh, yeah. I got two of them in my house, and the other one I needed one in. <laughs> Collar tie. If you got it. A frame. Okay. 
Yeah, if yeah. you got if you got you got a roof, you got you a got pitch you, roof. You got a pitch roof, but it, but it's exposed from the inside. Yeah, it's like cathedral yeah. style. Yeah, yep. Col is at the peak. Col no, col at the top is a ridge rafter. Mm -hmm. The yep. the collar tie goes at the top of. See, okay, if you had okay, if you had a truss set up, you would have you would have a essentially a joist going across. Now the top's a rafter, and then you have a joist going across on top of the uh, top mm -hmm. plates. Collar tie. You know my house, Drew. You know those metal things yes, yes. that stop the yes. walls from spreading. Yes. Collar that tie. would be a collar tie. Really? So were you stumped or not? Yeah, I, I kind of sensed a little I kinda, hesitation. I kind of, I kind of was. Although collar tie is really a piece of wood. But that's a yeah. metal one. It can one, also be metal, You're but it metal. can be a piece of wood. Too. Huzzah. Let's go to the next question. Collar tie would basically be the bottom of a truss system, right? Mm, well, trusses are, yeah, yeah, I guess it would because the trusses are made by, there's different kinds of trusses. There's scissor truss. There's all these different trusses. Yeah. Hey, Chris, you had another question. All right. There all we right. go. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll go that as a stump, but I knew what it was. It's pretty good. Fine. Well done. Well done. Huzzah. Huzzah. Yeah. <laughs> Huzzah. Here we go. What's up? All right. Um, for a while now, um, I've been waking up in the middle of the night without me knowing well I guess I guess sleep trying to get with my girlfriend and like she'll wake up and she'll be like trying to wake me up and I'm like I'm not trying to rape her but I'm trying to like have sex with her and I'm asleep yeah mm. and I do not I do not wake up at all now my previous relationship for I mean, that was a long long relationship she would tell me I did the same thing but I never believed her are you no, are you drinking when these ha episodes happen? I, I completely sober. I don't drink. I don't. Have you? Do you have a history of waking up sort of screaming in the middle of the night when you were younger, yeah, or even? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I do do that. Yeah, mm. th this is in the family of night terrors. These experiences mm. you have, and they're not all that uncommon. And people will sometimes get up and tear the room apart. And this, mm. is, I, I was talking to a psychiatrist about this the other day. You and, were. Th and yeah, because we had a patient who was doing this, and it, got, it gets worse when they drink. But I, we were saying, you know, maybe this is where the wives' tale comes about. You know, you don't want to wake somebody up when they're when they're sleepwalking because they get crazy, they get wild, yeah. they'll hurt themselves, they hurt somebody else. Oh, it's funny to watch someone sleepwalk. I mean, they don't want to yeah. screw that up. But they will get violent. They're like confused. And they get violent and agitated. And stuff very easily because they're not awake. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, you know, it freaks the girlfriend out because you can get kind of aggressive about it and you try to commit a, a violent crime. What does mm -hmm. it stem from, though? How do you... It's, it's are you usually a childhood thing? trauma stuff and it, it has a seizure-like quality to it. Sometimes anti-epileptic medication works. Trazodone works at mm -hmm. nighttime. There, there's some medicines you can take at bedtime to stop this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. All right, Chris, come on. One more stump. Wait, wait, on, wait, wait. I want, to just, I want you to tell Genevieve... No more home improvement. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Genevieve has to understand Genevieve that... burnt out on home improvement. I know. And she has it's to awesome. understand <laughs> that, that Chris nearly committed a violent crime on his, on his girlfriend. A oh, violent yeah. crime. Oh. I, I was doing an interview with somebody this evening who brought that up. He goes, well, you know, rape is a violent crime. Violent crime. We're always taught it's a violent crime. Well, violent it crime, is right? a violent yeah. crime, but they say it's, it's, it's not a sexual crime. Right. It's a <laughs> violent crime. Hang on a second, Chris. No, I'm not oh, going okay. into it. Oh, please. you got to no, explain to Genevieve. Tired. Come on. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I got a cool? Well, let me elaborate on that a little more. She says she's trying to wake me up, and my eyes, she looks at me, and my eyes are closed. Right. And, and do you say anything to her when she's telling you this? Like, no. No, I don't say anything. And she's like, sometimes she, because see, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I'll be kissing her, and then she'll kind of like, oh, she'll like that I'm kissing her, and we, and then we have sex. But then mm -hmm. like that's kind of like halfway awake, and then I'll be, I'll go right back to sleep, and then and she's, <laughs> she's laughing. Right there. She's jovial. Uh, last night I had, I, she had tried to wake me up. And, like, sometimes I'll wake up and my clothes are off, and I'll be like, how'd this happen? <laughs> I won't even know what's going on. And I'll, I'll be like, did you take off my shirt? And she's like, no, I didn't. Oh, well, Chris, that changes everything. That's a totally different story than what I just explained to you yeah. 10 minutes All ago. Right. I'm having a good Rape time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, it's All right, any more framing thing. stumpers, Chris? Okay, what's a cricket? Oh, a cricket wall? No, what, no, you're, no, what's a cricket on a roof? I would, that is the studs that's underneath the, uh, like, the gable at the end at the end of the wall. No, it's, is he wrong? It's, it's where you make a. It's where you make like a little mini roof where you know on a roof where there's like it, it, the water won't shed off. I mean, like so a parapet to, wall. You no, you kind of have to make like a little, a little like uh, let's say for instance like a little, a little hump to make the water fo flow into a certain. It sounds like what you're describing. I think yeah. he just got stumped by a sleepwalker. I think it's walker. also cricket. <laughs> I think the cricket, too, is that the framing on top of the uh, top plate at the end of, like, a pointed roof on a gable wall, too. I think that. Uh, I think you can classify that as a cricket wall, too. You're saying to move the wall around. All right, everybody. Huzzah. Well done, Chris. Huzzah. Hey, Genevieve. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
You know what, what you were saying about how you have design or not? I just I just graduated. I have an architectural degree. Uh-huh. And when you go through college for five years and all this kind of stuff for mm-hmm. learning design, mm-hmm. they don't teach you design. They never say that it's, this is how it is. It's kind of like you have to learn yourself. Especially it's with really, architecture. It's really like it's, an open-ended question. It is something you have to feel and you have to yeah. have, you know, an intuitive sense about it. But I think especially with architecture students, it's so important to integrate design into your learnings because you're going to be working with designers for the rest of your life, too, mm-hmm. if you're going to be in architecture. But, uh, you know, I, all yeah, I can it, say is... It, it, it's really one of those things like, you know, you, you find yourself fighting with... The teachers don't tell you anything. The professors don't tell you. You have to find it your own way. And that's kind of like... You either have it's it or true. you don't, like Adam was saying. Because the teachers want to have a reason for being there, saying there's a right way to do it or a wrong way, and I'm going to teach you how to do it. That kind of validates their position. And you have to have guidance, but you're right. You have to be told that it has to come from, from within. You have to find your own way. Huzzah. Sean? Huzzah. Yeah, I'm here. I have the definite uh, final answer out of the QPB word and phrase origin book. Oh, yeah, I've seen uh, that on the web. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. This starts with the initials of the Latin words, her solemns est perdita, which means Jerusalem is destroyed. And mm. it's like three sentences, so bear with me. German knights, not a very bright bunch, were supposed to have <laughs> known this and shouted hip hip when they hunted Jews in the persecutions of the Middle Ages. Mm-hmm. Hurrah, by the same imagine, is said to be a corruption of the Slavonic word for paradise, haraj. Therefore, if you shout hip hip hurrah, you're supposedly saying Jerusalem is destroyed or the infidels are destroyed and we are on the road to paradise. The mm-hmm. phrase doesn't date back earlier than the 18th century or oh, so. And boy. the exclamation hip, 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 also, or huzzah, an imitative sound expression of joy and enthusiasm. So huzzah is an imitative sound expression. Yeah. So uh, hip, yes, hip, sir. hurrah. We is, shouldn't be saying it anymore. <laughs> shouldn't be saying it. We're hunting Jews. <laughs> it's a genocidal it's uh, call to action. It's the most uh, politically incorrect thing I think you could possibly say. But yeah, it dates yeah. back to German knights who didn't quite get what they were saying. Wow. Well, All right. I don't think we quite got it either. Thanks, so Sean. No more huzzahs or hurrahs. Good, good times, though, huh? Yeah, great times. <laughs> yeah. Good work whoop, there whoop. up in Boise. I think whoop. we should just say word. We're going to uh, take ourselves a little break. Genevieve Gorder here tonight from Town Hall, Saturday, Saturday nights, 10 o'clock on TLC. And we'll be right back after this. Yeah, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Is it Thursday already? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Nice. Yeah, that's our Friday, everyone. Good times. I'm going to see you on Sunday for our winner, another winner to pay oh. the tsunami crisis. Yeah. Yeah. What are we doing? We're going to your restaurant. Oh, we are? Yeah, 8 o'clock. Thanks for telling me at a restaurant. We didn't have that, uh, like, 100th ownership it's in it. It's literally his. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. You know, it's just a small like percentage of it. I, like it oh, I didn't know we are doing that this... Uh, 8 o'clock Sunday. 8 o'clock Sunday. Do we, we we haven't talked about this, have we? No. Nobody's talked about it, have I don't they? know where I picked it up. I got it. All right. Somebody should tell me things. It'd be a good thing. All right. That, uh, well, you'll not be there. People are listening, but uh, you'll be but there you'll meet, Sunday uh, night. You'll meet Tom Burbine, who's the uh, right. Mount Holyoke astrophysicist who spent his entire month's summer salary on coming out here. God bless him. Genevieve Gordner, Gorder, I should say, uh, here tonight from, uh, how, uh, wait a minute, Town, Town Hall. Town Hall, Gorder. Yeah, I got the house. <laughs> on the TLC house Saturday there. nights. That's right, 10 o'clock. All right, let's uh, get back to a couple of uh, phone calls here. Speak to uh, Anna, who's 23. Anna? Hi. What's up? Yeah, I'm just wondering if it's possible to have postpartum depression if you're not actually a biological parent. I mean, as mm. a nanny. No. That the postpartum depression is specifically a biological response to the profound hormonal and biological changes of pregnancy. Okay. So you can't now if you're around somebody with postpartum depression, you can get pulled into the. I mean, depression can be sort of let's call it contagious, for mm-hmm. lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. And there's no doubt that the stress of childbearing can right. cause people depression, and it, being around babies can be very evocative of any deficiencies of your own childhood mm-hmm. and pull you into depression. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah, so, I wasn't really sure. I, so what, you, you have to on? leave children you've been nannying for? 
No, I'm not. I'm not. I don't plan on leaving them um, anytime soon. But um, my boss just had a new baby, and it's just been really overwhelming. And I've noticed that I've started to feel really depressed and kind of, well, overwhelmed. It's hard. <laughs> Well, that's not postpartum. That's just being overwhelmed. Yeah, you just send yeah. Annie and uh, mm -hmm. somebody threw another. You were juggling three balls. Someone threw a fourth one in there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So I was just talking to a friend of mine, and she was, like, kind of joking around. She's like, oh, you probably have postpartum depression. And I was wondering mm -hmm. if that's actually possible. No. Mm -hmm. But but if the if the mom has postpartum depression, you could sort of get pulled into it. How's the nanny stuff work? Is that a cool gig? It's it's a lot of fun. It's It's, um... It has its ups and downs, definitely. It's hard what to kind the, what, of... I would make my nanny wear a uh, cape. And a hat. <laughs> and I, remember Phoebe Figure Lily from Nanny and the Professor? Yes. <laughs> she actually had, like, a cape. She was a proper nanny. I would make my nanny. Capes anymore. I would make her wear a cape. Well, I don't know if it's a cape, but it was, you know, it was, it was like a poncho-y, cape -y thing. I'd make an umbrella with a parrot head on it, a little pill head. Why did yeah, you become a nanny? Yeah. Why did you become a nanny? Um, well, it started a few years ago, um, just to move. I went out to New York for a while and I thought it would be fun. I don't know. I've always been around children. I, have a, I come from a really large family. And mm -hmm. Are you the oldest? Uh, no, I am the third of seven. Mm. So. And again, whatever deficiencies that result from having been a part of such a big family may be sort of mm -hmm. being evoked again here. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. All right. All right. Well, anyway, so if you have depression, uh, postpartum depression, it's just depression. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank I you. say you get a cape, <laughs> and remember Nanny and the professor. She would wear a cape, and she'd wear like a uh, almost like a English riding uh, type of hard hat. Yes, without the bill. Yeah. It was, yeah. Just a little it was, dome. It was oh, hot. It might have right. had a little bill. It was. She was very English. Super smoking hot. Good teeth. No. Great. No. No. She had good English. teeth for it. No. She. She was hot. Uh, remember how much you dug her? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. Mm-hmm. You remember. Genie, Bewitched. Yeah. And then Nanny. Yeah. And then spilled into Wonder Woman for me. Oh, of course. Oh. And then Charlie's Angels. Oh, yeah. Oh. And now, Wonder Woman was hot. Now it's, the, now it's the Powderpuff Girls. Yeah. Yeah. A big animation. I lost you on that one. Yeah, well, you can catch up. Sarah? <laughs> Trying. <laughs> um, this is her boyfriend. She wanted me to talk to you. All right. 21. Or however old. Uh, how old are you? Um, I'm 23. Four, she's 21. All right. Okay. What's your name? Uh, my name's Mike. All right. Here we go. Um, well, we found out she was pregnant, and we decided on having an abortion, and it's kind of been a really bad situation for the both of us all together. Like, Why? her parents flipped out and called her nasty and told me to get out of her life, and mm -hmm. we ended Not up going through yeah. with it, and we got the, the mice prex and the cytotech and did the medical abortion. Yeah. Wow. And she was bleeding really heavily after that. So well, what is a side attack? attack? What is it? It's it's the mif mif misopristone yeah, in the uh, side attack. That's the chemical the, yeah. stuff? All right. And uh, we went back a couple of days after that, and they had to do the, the surgical abortion to stop the bleeding because okay. she was bleeding too heavy. Happened. And just tonight, we had an extra pregnancy test laying around, and I told her for the hell of it, take it, and it came back positive. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes you wonder whether there's some, still some retained stuff in there. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head the half-life, but what that test for is beta HCG, which is something produced by the placenta. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how long that stays in your system after the products of conception are removed. But it does make you worry that maybe there's a remaining tubal pregnancy mm -hmm. or something left behind in the uterus. So you, you ought to call and ask them. I, I don't know the half-life of the beta HCG offhand. Mm -hmm. um, for, um, we wanted to thank you, too, because part of the reason we were smart enough to make our decision was from listening to you for a long time. Drew loves abortion. No, I don't. He's got a shirt that says, I heart, and it says abortion. <laughs> I heart adoption. Yeah. Uh, except for it's spelled out abortion. He he wanted it to say adoption. Well, I didn't think you guys are screwing me up. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have a Planned Parenthood close to where you live? Um, no. Actually, that's that's where we went, and we're kind of dissatisfied with the way they are down there. Yeah. Really? Because yeah, I was just going to say, if you just need a free checkup or a... a well, yeah, what, what's, what's the deal? But it's 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 basically free, right? I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, it costed 450 bucks. It was... Kind of well, not for a checkup, though. 
Oh well, I don't know about that. That's not what we want. Abortion down. run for? I, I could have got you same abortion for three seventy five. <laughs> same abortion, <laughs> same one. Don't Literally, listen to him. you got to shop it around. Plus, I I could have chewed him down to uh, three three fifty. I could have done that. True, you you would have been in there. You would have been like four fifty. I'll I'll do it myself. Fat. Fat. Come on, I'll give you a four hundred cash. Cash on the barrel head. Come on, sweet. Shh, sweetie, be quiet. Let me do it. Yeah. You're haggling. Is that, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that poor taste, by the way? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So, uh, Mike, ne- next time, don't tell her parents uh, you're pregnant until you figure out, you know, whether you want to get the abortion or not. You guys are also 21 and 24, so it's really your business. Right. Keep yeah, that, that, that's, what, that's what we found out the hard way. We said, yeah. All right. Mm. All right. I just I got to say hi to Shannon. It's been on hold for a thousand years. Shannon? Shannon's trust on these things. 22-year-old uh, internet boyfriend says she's... Uh, I think she's 20. She's actually 16. Tell him the truth. Oh, oh okay. It's becoming an illegal situation. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, and you know, the guy can go to jail. I don't know how they do that, by the way. He can go like, to jail without knowing that he was with a minor. I, no, it happens yeah, all I the know. time. Just from having contact on the internet? But no, he, from actually having uh, physical contact when they meet at the mall in uh, three but, weeks. But, but unknow- unknowingly, really believing his guys get busted. It's like, uh, look, she's a she's a C cop. She's wearing lip gloss, and she said she was in junior college. And she's got a fake ID. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah you, sh- you you should have cut her open and counted the rings, or you should have asked for birth certificate. Like, what, what, what? Pop culture, you got to quiz them. Yeah, it's the only you... way you can know how old they are Ooh, for huzzah, real. Huzzah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. What was the name of the uh, actress that played Blossom? <laughs> That's oh, what I do. Yeah, with you the can't nose. come up with like a Maya Bialik. <laughs> you can't come up with that, sweetie. You ain't getting on board. Yeah, that's the secret. That's how I do it. I have to keep moving it. Mm-hmm. She must be in medical school by now. Yeah, it used to be. That's, that's yeah, no, used, seriously, she was. Used to be. Used to be questions about MacArthur in the Philippines. Now it's uh, that's Maya Bialik. You're dating yourself. I know. Let's take a break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Explain life to Genevieve. Where's the name of the winner? <laughs> oh, guy who won. There we go. Yeah, Terry, Terry Field, Las Vegas. God bless you, buddy. You got yourself a uh, iPod. Uh, Town Hall, everybody. 10 o'clock, <laughs> TLC, Saturday night. Go out and uh, watch that. A delight, Genevieve. Thank you. Thank you for uh, being coming here in. Tonight. Huzzah. 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 Our pleasure. Good Huzzah. Huzzah. want to thank uh, Engineer Anderson for doing a great job. Engineer Chris for doing a great job. Huh? Engineer Michelle for doing a great job. I want to thank uh, producer Ann and Junior, 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 producer Lauren for doing a great job. And I don't know if you're keeping track, but I knocked like 11 juniors off from last week. So she's really working up. We're going way up. Only 170 people between her and producer Ann now. Uh, and uh, Brian for doing a great job on the phones. And if I haven't Corey thanked you. Corey? Wasn't Corey on the phones? Who else was on the phone this way? That last was the last week. week. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. So until next time, it's Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. It yes. kind of dirties the language Suck a little schnizel. bit. <laughs> Suck that schnizel good. Yeah. Yeah, it's hot. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. Or the station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.